this first one, you can see that it's in vertex form. Now remember vertex form is like this, a x minus h squared plus k, h and k, that's the vertex of the parabola. The a tells you whether it's opening up if it's positive, down if it's negative, and if it's greater than one, it's a stretch, and if it's less than one, or between zero and one, it's a compression, right? So let's graph this. So it, sees, it looks like the vertex is at positive two, positive four, so that's one, two, three, four, right about there, that's your vertex. And then the negative two, what we can do is we can make a table, just looking at the parent function, negative two x squared, Okay, and you can see that if uh, x is one, y is negative two. If x is two, that's gonna be at negative eight. Okay, so if we plot those points from the vertex as if it was the origin, we're gonna go right one, okay, and we're gonna go down two. So that looks like it's gonna be right about there. And same thing over here, we're gonna go left one, down two, because it's symmetric about that axis of symmetry, okay, about the vertex. And then we can plot this point, but it's starting to go off the graph here. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna graph it. But notice how that it's less than or equal to. And equal to means it includes the points, okay, on the, okay, I probably should have drawn a few more points, but basically there's the graph right there. It includes the points on the graph. Less than or equal to means that if we pick any point on the graph, let's say like for example the vertex, less than means we're shading down. Okay, if it was greater than we're shading up. Because remember y, the y controls the vertical direction, up and down, right? So less than we're shading below. So I pick this point on the graph, less than would be below. This point, less than is below, less than below. And so if we can kind of sketch this a little bit here to get an idea of that region, meaning any point in this region will make this inequality true. Any region outside here will make it false. Now if we want to graph this second uh, inequality, you can see that this is a quadratic, but it's in the factored form, or also known as the intercept form. If we set these factors to zero, we get two and four. Okay, so let's see, we've got one, two, so right there, and three, four, right there, okay? And if you find the halfway point between two and four, that's three, that's gonna be the axis of symmetry of the parabola. And if we put three in here, you get three minus two is one, three minus four here is a negative one, one times negative one is negative one. So on that axis of symmetry, we're down here at negative one. Now, notice how it's y is greater than but not equal to. That means this is actually going to be a dashed or a dotted uh, graph. It doesn't include the points on the parabola. Okay, it just includes the points that are greater than. Now, when you think of greater than, y again controls the vertical direction up and down. Greater than, we're shading above. Okay, so if I pick any point on this parabola, I'm shading above. Okay, notice I'm shading up like this. And if you can take a closer look here, you can see where are they overlapping. They're overlapping in this region right here. That's where it's cross-hatched. So I'm just gonna go back and I'm gonna darken that in a little bit darker so we can see it. So you can see one parabola is opening up and we're shading greater than, and the other one's opening down and we're shading less than below. You don't wanna get in caught where uh, some students think like inside and outside. Don't think uh, that way. Just think if this is your parabola, greater than, pick any point shade straight up. That's if the y is by itself. That means the y values are greater. If it's less than, then you would pick a point on the graph and you would shade below, okay, like that. So don't think inside, outside. Think above, below, and then you see where the two regions overlap, and that's going to be the solution set. Any point in here will make both of these inequalities true, and you've got it. So I'm going to do another video like this if you want to see another example, uh, example number two. Subscribe to the channel. Check out some of the other math videos I have on Mario's Math Tutor YouTube channel. And I look forward to seeing you in the future videos. I'll talk to you soon.